Good morning, everyone. How's it going? Awesome. This is like awesome. We need to give you guys pancakes every week. Um, why don't you stand up and join me? It's nice to be back. Just want to welcome you to St. Andrews United Methodist Church. Uh, whether you're joining us here in person or online, we just want to say welcome and that we're, we're glad to have you here. And we decided this morning to do things a little bit different. Normally, if you're, if you're just visiting, we normally have a full band. But we thought this week it would be fun to do like kind of this living room setup. So I don't know if you've ever sang songs around Christmas time in a living room. Uh, I had to do that all of the time growing up. But <laughs> my dad's a musician, so. But um, you have to sing. Like, that's part of it. Because if you don't sing, everybody knows you're not singing. So we're going to start out with a song I know you guys know. So you have to sing along, all right? Big ending. St. Andrews. I'm so happy to be worshiping with you today. My name is Jane Rideout. I'm one of the co-lead pastors and along with my husband Gary and we're just so happy to get to be worshiping with you today. If you are joining us on live stream or you're here in the building, this will be a wonderful day of worshiping on the third Sunday of Advent. Now down here as you can see this is filled up. Today is the last day of the 12 days of giving. You can still give online today if you'd like to and um, for the 12th day of giving, we are having a pancake, ba um, br a pancake breakfast out in the courtyard. So following this service, if you'd like to go on out and have some pancakes with your family, we encourage you to do that. And all those donations will go to our youth group who will use them this summer for all the activities that they do. So thank you for supporting our youth for the pancake breakfast today. Now, next week is a really important day in the life of our church. And we're going to be doing things different in order to make it successful. So next Sunday is what we have is Cantata Sunday. So instead of normal three services, there will be two services next Sunday. And at 9 a.m., we will be having our Cantata, which will be all of our choir and our orchestra. And it will be spectacular. And everyone needs to be there. 
that's just an opportunity to hear Christmas music and really begin worshiping in a way that is kind of different than anything else we do. So cantatas are wonderful. Then at 11 o'clock, we will be having the contemporary worship. Okay, so for all of you contemporary worshipers, what time will it be next week? No, 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 no. Let's try this again. Contemporary worship is at 11. Contemporary worship. Cantata is at 9 o'clock. And I'm of the opinion on that next Sunday you go twice. That's just my, that's what I've always done. You go to cantata and then go have some breakfast and then you come back and you do contemporary worship. But contemporary worship is at 11. So cantata is at 9. Contemporary worship is at 11. What time is contemporary worship next week? There you go. Okay. All right. So thank you for bearing with me as I explained it really poorly. But next week, contemporaries at 11. We'll also have all of our kids' program will also, programming will also be at, at 11. So if your kids want to participate in all that, 11 o'clock. But also consider doing two services next week. So it's just a great opportunity. And then finally, Christmas Eve is right around the corner. And every year we have four outstanding services. At 4.30 on Christmas Eve, we'll have what we call family service. At 6.30, we will have contemporary. At um, 8.30, we will have traditional. And at 11, we'll have traditional. All are candlelight. At 11, you also get communion. Now, this is what's going to be different this year. We're actually very excited about it. This has kind of a, been a big push for us to do this. We will not be having any live stream. Instead, we'll be creating two special services that will be played at either 5.30 or 7.30. At 5.30 will be the contemporary, and at 7.30 will be the um, traditional. These have been created spe specifically for people who watch online. These are for all of you who watch online. And we really want you to um, um, partake of those and watch those. We think it will be a blessing to you. We are making them only for you and you alone because we want you to have the most meaningful Christmas Eve service. So for the rest of you, I think you should watch one of them, and then we'll, at some point we'll get some feedback on what you thought of it, but this is kind of the new way we are trying to minister to those who are not able to be in the sanctuary with us, and so we really want this to be a blessing to them. All right, so I think that's plenty of um, announcements now, and I'd like to invite the Phillips family now to lead us in the light, lighting of our Advent candle. We light these candles in order to prepare the way of joy. With all the real struggles people face in the world today, there's a great joy given from God, our Father. May the good news of great joy be known to all the world this Advent. Please join us for the congressional, congressional Congregational response. <laughs> o come, O come, Emmanuel, bring your joy. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Sing that again. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. All right, well, why don't you guys stand and join us as we continue uh, this morning. We're going to do a couple more songs, uh, and this morning's theme is joy, so we're going to sing about uh, God being our king, and I think that that's a reason to have joy, is because we know that no matter what we're facing, that he is ruling over everything. All right, so let's sing this song together. Our God, a firm foundation, solid ground as nations rise and fall the kingdoms are strong now shaken but we trust forever in your name the name of 
Jesus. We trust the name of Jesus. Because you are the only King forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever. Forevermore, you are victorious. Unmatched, unmatched in all your wisdom, in love, just you will reign, and every knee will bow. We bring our expectations, as our hope is anchored in your name, name of Jesus, and we trust. Trust the name of Jesus. Cause you are the only King forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever. Forevermore, you are victorious. You are the only King forever. Almighty God. Let us adore that's talking about how God came for those of us who may feel like we're not worthy. And it lists all these people at the beginning, and I just think, like, I have felt this way. It says, for the unclean. Have you ever felt like you did something wrong? All right? I am the only person in this room who's felt like he's done something wrong. I don't mean, like, right now. <laughs> I'm saying, like, but be, even because of that, even because of God's love for us, we know that uh, we are accepted in him. You know, it says, for the broken, for the unworthy, you came. So even though we may feel like, oh, man, I am not worthy of this, God says we are. He says we're his children. And, you know, even when your kid messes up, you still kind of love them a little bit, right? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That wasn't a very strong response. Samuel, I want you to know I love you, even if you mess up. Okay, bud? <laughs> All right, let's sing this song. For the unclean, the unholy, for the broken, the unworthy. Jesus, you came for the wounded, for the hurting, for the lost, and for the lonely, you came. Jesus, you came. Sing 
Oh, come all you faithful. I was just kind of thinking about this maybe because I was in, I don't think they said where I was. I was in Paris. We were, we were really struggling through some time um, in Paris. But um, I, I was just thinking as we, as we sing this song, it says, let us adore. And if you've, you've ever been anywhere where there was like a king or anything, you see all these crazy, ridiculous like palaces. And then you, you know that like people lived in shacks. And I think, you know, we, we think of that when we think of a king. And that's not how Jesus is because we know that Jesus came and he said what John the Baptist announced him by saying, uh, the mountains will be leveled and the valleys will be filled and the narrow or the crooked places will be made straight. He was saying, you know, I'm not coming here as like this great mountain, you know, in contrast to where you're living. He's saying, I'm going to come down here to take care of you. I'm going to come down here and live among you. I think that's just something as we're thinking about joy this morning that we can uh, find hope in as well and um, just be excited about what we're facing because we know that we have a king who is walking beside us through everything. Uh, so uh, why don't you have a seat? We're going to continue this morning. When our hearts are broken, he is the means of grace and forgiveness. When life seems impossible, he shows us moments of heaven on earth through his miracles. He breathes new life into spaces of death 
in hopelessness. When our world is tipping and we can't find our balance, he brings us perfect peace and hope. Jesus, the hope of Christmas. Well, good morning. I'm uh, Pastor Gary Rideout. I'm uh, one of the co see, I can never get my title straight. I'm assistant to the regional manager, or I'm assistant regional manager. It's one of those two. Some of you will get that reference from the office. Co senior pastor with my wife, Jane. We're glad to be with you, uh, be here today. I'm glad all those out in the live stream are with us today. Why don't you wave to us and we'll pretend we can see you, okay? So, but uh, this uh, is the third. Uh, Sunday in Advent, as we've already discussed, and we're going to start out with probably a, a s scripture that's part of the Christmas narrative that many of you are familiar with. It's from Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. Nearby shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. Their Lord, the Lord's angel stood before them, the Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you. Wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great assembly of the heavenly forces was with the angel praising God. They said, glory to God in heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. As you've already seen from lighting the, the candles, that today's theme is joy. This sun, this Sunday is also known as Gaudete Sunday. Got that? Gaudete. Say it with me. Gaudete. You got it. The word Gaudete comes from the, from the Latin. It means rejoice, to be joyful. So that's why we call it Gaudete. We're surrounded uh, by joy today, embodied by it. And you may no notice, some of you who are awake may have noticed that Today's candles are different color. How many of you noticed that? It's very good, very good. And you're uh, probably wonder why that candle is a different color. Well, I'm about to tell you, okay? So today the candle, uh, usually the other candles are kind of a purple color. Today for Gaudete Sunday, it's pink because that's the traditional color that symbolizes joy. Actually, it's more of a pinkish rose, but it, we got a, a pink candle up here to represent day of joy, Sunday of joy. And Advent is a season of waiting, and today we're called to be joyful as we await the coming of the Christ child. So, in the scripture passage, we hear the angels coming, actually, first of all, just one angel coming to uh, the shepherds watching their flock at night to announce that God, the good news of an extraordinary event, the coming of the Messiah, news that will bring great joy to all people. A Savior is born in Bethlehem, Christ the Lord. So can you imagine you're out in the field at night, a very tranquil pastoral scene, and all of a sudden you're interrupted by an angel? Joy is not the, my first reaction when that happens. Is I don't think it was their first reaction either. I think it was, it was heart-stopping fear would be a better description of that reaction. But the angel, the angel tells the shepherds, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, which I don't think how well it went over because right after he said that, a whole bunch of more angels came, the, the host, of, a host of angels, a great assembly, an even greater number of them. But you think of, they announced the news of Christ's coming and of great joy. What would be joy to a shepherd? Did you ever think about that? What would be a joy? Uh, to be in, out in the stillness and tranquility of the open field, Someone walks out with a big jar of cold water, you know, and, and uh, gives it to you for free, or, 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 or they've got a, a fresh baked bread for you, a clean set of clothes or fresh sandals for you. Or the, the pack of wolves will, or will emerge from the forest to say, okay, we'll just leave you alone today, okay? We'll wander off and we'll just leave you alone. You just watch your sheep. You'll be okay. Would that bring them joy? Would that bring them joy? Joy may be seen to be an alien term to shepherds. 
They certainly didn't appear to have a very joy-filled life. In time of Jesus, shepherding and shepherds were despised. They were scorned as unclean. In the first century, shepherds were kind of the lowest uh, socioeconomic rung of the ladder. Many of the Jews were shepherds. We see that Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac were all shepherds. But they were considered less educated, and they lived in poverty. You might, you might own sheep. You might be very wealthy for owning sheep. But if you're the guy tending sheep at night, you're kind of at the bottom rung of the ladder in the corporate organization. You're either the youngest child or, or you're a hired hand. The shepherds, of course, you can imagine, were dirty and smelly because all they did was hang around sheep all day. And they smelled like the sheep. They were considered insignificant. Nobody wanted much to do with them. And some rabbis in Jesus' day held that shepherds, because of their wandering trespass, trespass nature of their job, they could never be forgiven because they could never make retribution for the grasses that their flocks ate or stole, as they look at, off of someone else's land. The religious culture of the day therefore considered shepherds reprehensible people, practicing a shameful profession. So what would bring joy to their meager existence? You ever think about that? What would bring shepherd a joy? But I guess we have to ask that of ourselves, too. What would bring us joy? What would joy look like for us? How would we recognize joy when we have it? Is joy the same as pleasure or as happiness? Is it a full bank account or a car that runs or a great night out on a Saturday night or a good report card or getting a raise or a great family day outing? Or is it something meatier like freedom from fear, freedom from the burdens of life, being comfortable or, or being at peace? I, is, is joy an emotion or is it a state of mind? I know I've got a lot of questions today, don't I? But I just wanted to get you to reflect on what do you think of joy? When you hear about joy, what do you think of? What do you think of? And we are bombarded with messages about the joy of Christmas. There are numerous Christmas carols that, 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 that sing of the virtues of the joys of Christmas. But for some, for many, there's a bit of a hollow ring each year when we speak of joy. Christmas for some, not very merry not very joyful but it's the most wonderful time of the year isn't that what that song says that's what it's supposed to feel like right the most wonderful time of the year only it's not it's not for everyone it, it, it's turned into the stressful time of year hasn't it we don't seem to have enough hours in the day to get everything done. We've got to buy presents. We've got parties to attend. We've got decorations to go to. We've got children's events to attend. Uh, you know, got relatives and friends to visit. And, and you can't get anywhere in town because the traffic is horrible. Uh, you're at a standstill, especially if you're on Bloomingdale. And, and you find that perfect gift. You have this experience. You find that perfect gift for someone uh, that's special to you. And Amazon says it won't come till after Christmas. <laughs> it doesn't feel like sometimes that's the most wonderful time of the year, does it? We can just admit this. This year has been a tough year. You know, we thought that this COVID crisis would be over with by now. I remember saying last year at this time, said, oh, just think about next year. We'll have so much hope that this COVID is, uh, will be over. We'll be over with it. But it still lingers on. It still lingers on. Every year on the first Sunday of November, it's All Saints Sunday. We honor and remember those from our church uh, community who we've lost in the past year. This past November, we honored 24 souls, the most we've ever lost in one year, according to what people remember. So for many in our community, there will be an empty chair at the table at Christmas this year. And, and our grief share and our divorce care support groups at the church, they're overflowing. The despair at this time of the year seems too much to bear for us. It's the most wonderful time of the year. For some, no, it's not. It's not. And trying to smile and say Merry Christmas is not going to make it any better. Or wishing someone a Happy New Year when you're not even sure how you're going to make it through the next year. 
It's pretty near impossible. The Christmas holidays are supposed to be times of peace and joy and happiness. The media, we see these perfect images of family and friends, foods and parties and gifts that puts it at a high standard we're all supposed to meet. Everybody's having a good time. Our homes are festively decorated, just like you see in Martha Stewart, right? It's supposed to be a time of joy and celebration, but it's not for some. It's not for many. If it is a season of joy and happiness, how come we all too often seem so angry, so stressed, so strung out? And we wonder, what's wrong with us? We can't even get in the Christmas spirit. And everybody else apparently appears to be, be doing so. And we may know why we're not in the Christmas spirit this year. There may be a very good reason why you don't feel so joyful during this, during this time of the year. But, but it's Christmas. We should be able to put our pain to the side, to, to renew us in our festive spirit. It's Christmas. Let's get in a good mood. Why can't we make ourselves happy enjoying this season like we see all the people on TV? Well, you know, even Ebenezer Scrooge caught the Christmas spirit eventually. For some, Christmas doesn't always bring up some happy memories. Sleigh rides through the snow, happy families gathered around the fireplace singing Christmas carols while Aunt Gladys plays the piano. That may not be your photo album of your Christmases. We all have Christmases we'd like to forget. There was a Christmas that I would soon not remember. There was a time in Christmas I was alone in Texas by myself. I couldn't afford to fly home to be with my family. I spent all day in bed with a stomach flu. And uh, this was, there was a freak cold front in Houston, believe it or not, where the temperatures were down in the teens, and the furnace went out in the house. So I'm covered with all those bundles of blankets. I couldn't find anybody to come on Christmas Day to fix the furnace. You know, I could look back at that Christmas now and just kind of laugh it off. Yet there are some memories of Christmas past and reality that could be quite painful that are not so easy to forget. So painful, there's not even enough eggnog in the world to make you feel better, to make it a joyous time. So painful, there's a time of year that we just try to get through it instead of celebrating. It's the most wonderful time of the year. In truth, it really hasn't been the most wonderful time of the year. Let's just think of that very first Christmas. Let's look see at that. The story of the birth of Jesus is not a very jolly story, is it? It's the story of a teenage girl pregnant with a child that's not her husband's. It's the story of a young girl and a husband that when she found herself in labor, she was basically homeless. It's the story of a child born in a dirty animal stall. It's the story of a family of refugees who had to flee their homeland so that the child would not be killed. It's a story of a young couple who brought their baby son on the eighth day to, to be dedicated in the temple, but they didn't have enough money to have him dedicated, so they asked to use two pigeons to sacrifice. It's a story of a jealous king who was so threatened by the word about a new king being born in Bethlehem that he had all the baby boys killed in that area. This isn't a very happy story. It's the story of one sent into the world in peace who was eventually condemned to death. So, so don't get the sense that there is something wrong with you if, if your Christmas doesn't instantly bring waves of joy and peace and goodwill toward men. You, know, you can say it's not the most wonderful time of the, of the year. But you know, the paradox is, it actually is the most wonderful time of the year. If you forget about the tinsel and the trees, if you forget about the parties and the jolly tidings, if you forget about the presents and the ornaments and the trappings, it, it's, if we forget about the warm and cozy scenes of the happy family gathered around the Christmas trees sharing Christmas, if we forget about that, it's the most wonderful time of the year, not because we have to be cheery, happy, and merry, but because we don't. We can be real. We can be real with our pain. We can have heavy spirits, shattered dreams, deep sorrow, broken hearts, deep wounds. And in all these things, God still comes to us. God still comes to us. God relentlessly pursues us to comfort us, to redeem us, to save us, to give us hope, to grant us peace. Even to the extreme, they came to be one of us, as one of us, so we could feel, he could feel the same experience that we have. 
the happy times, yet even more importantly, the painful times. For God's love and grace for us is not diminished by the darkness we may feel. So let's remember the story. Mary was alone and afraid, yet God was with her and exalted her. Joseph was disgraced. His, his, uh, his fiance was pregnant. Yet God revealed to Joseph the wondrous purpose for his life. The shepherds were afraid, yet God gave them comfort. The magi were in danger, yet God protected them. The lowly were in prison, yet Jesus came to set them free. The blind wandered aimlessly, yet Christ gave them eyes to see. The sorrowful grieved deeply, yet Christ came to wipe away the tears. We may be alone, yet in Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God is with us. The world was in darkness, yet God sent the light of life to shine in the darkness. We celebrate this Christmas season. This is why Jesus came to us for these times when we're feeling the darkness, when we're for the pain in our lives, not to disregard it. Christmas can be a time of anxiety, a time when we come face to face with the pain in our lives. It's the season when the basic questions of our lives are pushed to the forefront. It's a time when we must face the deep loss in our lives, the broken hearts, the shattered dreams. And, and we feel as the people of Israel in the time of Isaiah, walking, wandering, lost in the wilderness. For in the wilderness, in the scripture, is always a place of confusion, of chaos, a place of being lost, seeking direction. The place where we've lost our bearing in life and wonder if we'll ever get it back in the wilderness. Yet the prophet Isaiah reminded the people of Israel that there will come a time when a path will be made through the wilderness. A voice is crying out, clear the Lord's way in the desert. Make a level highway in the wilderness for our God. Every valley will be raised up and every mountain and hill will be flattened. Uneven ground will become level and rough terrain a valley plain. The Lord's glory will appear and all humanity will see it together. The Lord's mouth has commanded it. Through that, through that chaos and confusion in our lives, Jesus comes to give us a path through the wilderness where every valley will be raised up and every mountain will be made low. The rough ground will be leveled. The rugged places will be a plain into our feet, making a straight path even in the wilderness in our lives. And when this happens, the glory of God will be revealed and everyone together will see it. This is why, this is why we have Chris, Christmas. This is why Jesus came. Christmas is a season that reminds us of the coming of the Christ child who comes bearing a straight bath path for our feet through the wilderness in our lives so that our valleys are raised up and our mountains are made low. It reminds us that God came to us in the flesh to become one of us, one with us, so that we may see that light through the darkness. We may not feel jolly. We may struggle to sing of chestnuts ro roasting on an open fire. We may struggle to get the, even the words Merry Christmas out of our mouth. We may not even feel like putting on that Christmas sweater with a reindeer and Santa on the sleigh. But you know what? That's okay. That's okay. The message of Christmas is not about being jolly and bearing glad tidings. It's a story of one who came to bring us light into the darkness of our lives, to the darkness in our world. It's not a time in which we try to ignore the darkness in our lives. To pretend that the darkness doesn't exist. Or to think that if we just get in the Christmas spirit, the darkness will go away. I'm not here to tell you that scripture says, cheer up. Or to give you a happy song to sing in your heart. To make you feel lively and forget about the darkness that ho hovers in your life. Or to tell you to just get over it. It's Christmas. Scripture never denies the existence of the darkness. Never denies its reality. Just as we cannot deny the pain in our lives that we may feel at some times. God knows the darkness in our life. He cares deeply that we are hurting. This is why Christ came for us. This is what we celebrate during the Advent and Christmas season. And through Christ, God has given us a real light. A light that can punch a hole in the darkness. And God has given us the great light. And it is the light for which darkness can never, ever, ever, ever overcome. 
as we're in the midst of the, of the Advent season, preparing ourselves for the coming of the Christ child in the manger. We acknowledge that the light of Christ in our lives, for which we're reminded of during this Christmas season, a light that truly shines through the deepest of our darkness, for which a darkness can never overcome. For that is the true meaning of Christmas. This is where we find true joy. Let us pray. During this season of Advent, it's a season of waiting. God, give grace with the presence of mind to be attuned to what this is all about, that you came to us to be with us, and even in the dark times. Let us walk slowly into Advent and watch for the holy happenings that come to us as we journey to Bethlehem. In the midst of our darkness, open our eyes to the gift of light in our lives and let us walk slowly into Advent that we may take note whenever and wherever God comes, even to a dismal place like a stable. Hear our prayers during this time of waiting. We hear your call to the journey, yet we stumble. Our journey toward your promise of Christ's coming is filled with doubt, pain, and often despair, that there is yet that there is meaning in the waiting. Loving God, be with all those who are suffering in the aftermath of this violent storm in Kentucky and other, other areas. And grant peace to those who have died and comfort and strength to those who have grieved them. May those who have suffered damage or lost homes or possessions find support in others who have serving and caring hearts. Guard and guide first responders and aid workers. Protect those who are most vulnerable. Keep us all safe in your unending love. Creating us the hope that leads us forward from promise to the miracle of the baby and the manger, God with us. You have come in Jesus Christ to welcome us to you. Inspire our hearts to be ones that welcome all your children in his name. For we offer this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gary was speaking uh, this morning. I was thinking... You know, some of the things that he, he brought up are things that we do kind of put the burden on of giving us joy. Like, there's a lot of, you know, the perfect gift or the perfect setting. And I think we get consumed by these things so much. And then once we have them, it's, it's like, okay, well, now I have it. It's not that much of a fun thing anymore. It's more, almost like the anticipation of it is more fun than actually owning it. And we know that because we know that next year we have to get more stuff. So, you know, we know it's not lasting, but we still put this burden on it of bringing us joy. And I think if we would instead look at the person next to us and see that that is what has inherent value and that is what brings lasting joy, that we would probably feel a lot better and that's, that's a really good example of, of Christ, too. And we're celebrating him coming and being born. And he was coming to walk alongside of us. And I think that the other side of that is when we do that for other people, is bring joy in their lives or walk alongside somebody else, then that's when we're being the most, most like Christ. Like, that's the best way that we can celebrate Christmas. So we're going to um, g uh, have our time of offering here in a second. But I want to do something a little bit different. Um, if you guys can cooperate with me, because I think we all probably know somebody who, if we really think about it, is either by themselves or going through some kind of difficult situation. And it could be something as simple as remembering them or reaching out and giving them a phone call and saying, hey, do you have somebody to be with uh, during Christmas? Or is there anything I can do for you? Or just saying, hey, I hope you have a good Christmas. I know that there's a lot of people um, that I've served with in the past who they just enjoy that, hey, I was remembered by somebody. So what I would like to do is if you can bow your head and close your eyes and just take a moment and think, is there somebody who is in need of joy this year that I can be like Jesus to them and bring a little bit of joy to their life as we're leading up to Christmas? So I'm going to give you a moment here just to think about that. Right. If there's any names that came to mind, that is your assignment this week. You, you either call that person, you send them a message or something just to say, hey, I hope you're doing all right. Haven't heard from you for a while. Hey, do you have somebody to be with uh, for Christmas? And a lot of times they'll say, no, it's all right. I have somebody. But it means so much to them 
uh, just that you thought of them. So uh, we're going to have our time of response now, uh, which means that you uh, can help support this ministry by giving financially through saumc.life, uh, through giving through the Church Center app, if you have that on your phone, or we also have baskets here in the front. We have one in the front, not baskets, basket in the front, and uh, one in the back as well. And normally we say come up to the front and use this as a time of prayer if you would like to come up here and get alone. I think we have room for like one person if you would like to do that. So you guys get to charge up here and fight over who gets that corner over here, all right? So if there's anything that uh, you would like to get before God, get out of your seat, come up here and pray. Feel free to take that spot, all right? All right, well, let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you so much that you love us, that you do uh, bring joy to our lives, and you give us uh, an example of how we can bring joy to others. And I pray this morning as we sing this song about you being with us through all situations that we would uh, be mindful of what you've taught us. In your name, amen. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Perfect love is casting out fear. Even when I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life, I won't turn back. I know you are near. And I will fear no evil. For my God is with
never let go, Lord, you never let go of me. Yeah, all right. So remember your assignment this week for all of us, me included, right? To think of somebody who is in need of a little bit of joy and figure out a way to call them up and tell them a joke or send them a card or do something, all right? Something simple. And what time, because I know I have to ask this again because I have kids, what time is the contemporary service next week? All right, let's try that again, all right? What time is contemporary service next week? All right. Well, thank you for joining us, whether it was in person here or online. We just want to say again that everyone is welcome here. Uh, Let's close in prayer. Father, we love you. We thank you so much uh, that you love us, that you are here for us, and just like we sang, that you walk through every area of our life with us. And I pray that this week we do a good job of serving you and sharing joy with others. In your name, amen. All right, have a good week, everybody. Mm -hmm.